Hello everybody, this is your host Giuseppe Giornasti and I'm welcoming you to HNK Podcast. This podcast is made for you to be able to learn tips and tricks given to us by our friends, chefs, people in general, bakers and everybody who wants to share the wisdom related to baking and cooking. So make sure you listen, you subscribe to your iTunes, Spotify or Anchor FM and enjoy the listening. Today's guest comes from Spain and exactly from a region called Galicia, a region where seafood and abundant portion are a must. Edu, our guest, is an amazing baker and his passion comes through through the whole interview with different shades, especially when he speaks about sourdough and about the masa madre. Continue to listen to discover and learn how he got passionate and driven to bake his best sourdough life. Welcome to my welcome to my podcast and thank you to be such a amazing guest and I'm looking forward to know more about you so introduce yourself please Okay my name is uh, Edu Lavandeira I'm from Galicia it's uh, which is a, a, a region in the northwest of Spain above Portugal and um, uh, my profession is a filmmaker or director I work for a TV station and uh, and uh, well since uh, uh, um, 2012 or 13 I, I started uh, to bake at home and uh, to, to, to get in more and more involved uh, until here and until meeting you yeah what, what 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 has inspired you to start baking what made you start baking from filmmaking to baking uh, what... yeah. That's a, that's a good question. Uh, I love uh, cooking. Uh, I love everything related to cooking and eating, especially eating and cooking. And I love the way to, well, you, you, you as a cook, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, 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 I love the way to, the, the thing that you can transform and you can touch things and, and transform them. And the uh, baking is, it's all about that. And, and suddenly I discovered that the, with three, just the three ingredients at home, you can make magic in your oven and uh, as, as many other uh, bakers know this is quite addictive quite obsessing and became uh, 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 um, obsessed with it and uh, after uh, I don't know one one year or, or a year and a half baking at home uh, talking to my mom I uh, recall that my grandfather and my grandmother from a small village in here in Galicia were, were bakers, oh, professional you, bakers, you a see? long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I didn't know, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have any idea about it. Well, and my mom told me. You yeah, ra- ran through your me, veins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom told me, you, you move your hands like your grandfather. And I, uh, I think, oh, okay. I didn't know anything about it, but well, okay. Well, we have so, that in common. My grandfather was a baker as well. But I never met oh, him. Yeah? yeah, he died way before I was born. Mm. And in Italy, we car- to me. yeah, in Italy we carry the tradition on having the same name as well. So I have my grandfather name. So, and uh, I'm a chef. Mm. They love baking. So we're very similar, probably. <laughs> and uh, what it, um, did you find difficulties in to start baking? Because when I started baking, I found especially sourdough. It's not been easy. It's not been an easy journey. And uh, I wonder, how did you go over the first steps of, okay, it didn't come the way I wanted. It didn't work the way I wanted. Oh, this day didn't work. Oh, this day didn't. Because that's, I think, the biggest step for early bakers to jump off and try to keep going. How did you do that? Uh, trying and trying and, 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 and wasting a lot of flour and trying again and, and uh, trying to, to look at the errors and the mistakes and uh, and uh, baking a lot and, and, and 
uh, unfortunately throwing a lot of bread to the to the bin to the trash and and, and uh, giving as a gift bread for everybody because they know as, as friends that you are making it with a lot of effort yeah but but, the, but even now after after I don't know but many years making a home and you know that uh, there are some bakes that doesn't come doesn't come well no uh, you, you fail so you have to to, to keep going to keep uh, to be very very careful about all the, the whole process uh, especially now we are in winter here so yeah. now it's it's a bit cold yeah. you have to control the temperatures and uh, well it's it's uh, every day it's a different day so that's uh, one of the other things that makes it uh, uh, addictive I think well, thank you. That will inspire many people to do not give up and to keep going because that's the main thing. You need to push harder, go through the obstacles because as a beautiful book I read, obstacle is the way. That's the only way you improve. And uh, yeah. thank you for making that point pretty clear to everybody. I, sometimes I feel very, very, very happy when I see professional bakers and, and, and people who are baking for, for, for many years that uh, that make mistakes too and they, they oh. recognize that yeah so, that's... okay okay yeah that's something that happens to everybody i'm actually collecting all my mistakes because i want to make a video and show people it's not all pure gold what you see on the web and on the social media people only shows what comes out right they don't show you all mm -hmm. the failure but their result, the beautiful result, is actually the outcome of many, many, many failures, many mistakes. Exactly. So we just exactly. need to embrace failure, keep going, working hard, and being driven by your passion. Be very determined. You seem very determined as well. Like you want to make it, you made it. You discard it, throw it in the bin. Doesn't matter. And yeah, yeah. I, I really don't have much knowledge about Spanish baking, but what's the most traditional bread? Mm -hmm. uh, well, like like in Italy, uh, uh, a country that, that I, I know a little bit, uh, in, in Spain we have many regions with different kitchens, different ways of cooking, okay. different products, different ways of, uh, different dishes. And uh, that happens too with the bread. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to talk about the bread of my region, Galicia, yeah. because it's it's famous in, in the whole Spain for being one of the most important and one of the most uh, 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 precious breads in the whole country, uh, together with the bread from Catalonia, okay. in, the, in the other corner of, of Spain. Yeah. The, the, the typical bread in Galicia, it's, it's something uncommon in, in, in uh, other parts of the world. It's, it's a, a bread very hydrated. Okay. Uh, uh, um, usually until the 100 percent uh, uh, hydration okay with, with very wet dose very difficult to to handle to, to handle yeah and uh, and the the flavor it's like uh, the 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 crumb is gelatinized and the it's very um uh, uh wet and soft and um well it's a it's an amazing bread the the the, the crust is, is thin but at the same time, uh, it, it uh, lasts a long, long time. And, and that's the, the hydration of the bread here. Uh, it has a small story that I'm going to tell you. It's because the wheat here, it's uh, the, the wheat plant here in, in Galicia was short. And uh, the production of it was, was uh, too short. So the solution for the old bakers hundreds of years ago was to put a lot of water to compensate that uh, lack of, of wheat, so they they will have more bread with the same amount of wheat. That's well, that's the reason. It makes so much sense. But this is what I said. I had a beautiful post podcast the other day, and I was speaking to this lady from Vancouver in Canada, and she says that she feels lazy, and that's why she thinks that she looking for different ways. And I said, look, this is just a clear example that you exposed Edu about how laziness quote unquote, I don't believe it's laziness, but actually helps human being evolve and find different ways to get the most out of everything. That's a beautiful yeah. attitude to, to life, actually. And uh, yeah. I love baking because it teaches you so many aspects. Patience, love, care, attention, and yeah. 
everything else. And that's yeah. a beautiful piece of uh, history that you told us there. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's very yeah. clever yeah. as well. They were very smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's another thing, very, 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 very beautiful about, very beautiful about patient. Uh, there is another uh, famous uh, sentence that I know here from another uh, important baker in, in Spain. It's uh, Xavi Barriga. And there is a, a sentence he says that the most important uh, uh, tool for a baker is a chair, just a chair, because you need to wait and wait because the, the best bread is about waiting, waiting. About being patient. Yeah. That's the thing. So the most important uh, uh, tool for a baker, a chair. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> You're right. Completely right. Hey, did you, you just said that you one of the most uh, influencing baker in Spain. And have you ever, you not used, but do you like reading baking books or do you have any baking books that you would suggest to Spanish audience or to worldwide audiences? Yeah, sure. Uh, I started this journey uh, with a book from Ivan Yarza, who is a journalist, uh, a passionate uh, about bread. And he wrote a book uh, seven years ago, maybe. It's called in, in Spanish, Pan Casero, okay. Homemade Bread. Yeah, Pan de Casa. Yeah, yeah, Pan de Casa. And, uh, and it was uh, uh, the spark that made, made me start in this journey because it, it's very well explained. It's very uh, passionate, the, the language that, that he used. And uh, he introduced me in, in, in the world of sourdough. Yeah. And the, 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 the thing that you have uh, an alive thing in your house and uh, the benefits that come from the sourdough. Exactly. That was one of the other things, of the other important things, especially nowadays when we are talking a lot of, about health. Uh, food, about the health, mm -hmm. about gluten, about uh, uh, celiac people. And that was uh, uh, one of the other main important things or with one of the other things that make me been uh, uh, um, interested in this word. So Ivan Jarthan, this, uh, this book is, I recommend it strongly. I recommend it. I'm very, gonna look for it because I wanna much. read it because I think it's nice to learn different things from different country in the world. And one question that raises, it's for me, but is it sourdough something that's very rooted to Spanish culture or something that is coming up only now? Mm -hmm. Or they always, they've always been baking sourdough? Mm. I think when, when you talk about, uh, when you talk with, with, uh, Pasta madre. Uh, old, uh, mm. yeah, Pasta madre, exactly. When you talk, when you talk with uh, old bakers, uh, they tell you, they, they, they tell you that they used to use, uh, like uh, the, the dough from the, the, from the day before. Uh, it, it was a, co uh, th it was a kind of, of, uh, masa madre, of sourdough, but not, uh, wild. Uh, bacteria, not yeah, the yeah, one yeah. that you make with just uh, flour and water and time and temperature. Yeah. It was a kind of, of the dough that that um, that you have from the day before, from the baking, from the day before, and you use it for, for uh, to ferment the the bake of the of the day, and uh, that was used for a long time in all bakers, in all uh, bakeries in, in here traditionally, but uh, I think that they they used to use sourdough, but they didn't know. That they were using it uh, yeah. hundred uh, well, years ago, and nowadays, of course, uh, in, in the, the good bakeries, because that's a, that's a, a very sad story. There is no very there is no good bread in Spain. Mm -hmm. There's no good bread in Galicia. There are many bakeries with a, with a very bad bread uh, made in an hour. Yeah, like the the uh, petrol station bread. Yeah, that's the, the main is, issue uh, everywhere. It's, it's, it's the main example. Of the, of the of the bad bread yeah that's a that's one of the issues i think everywhere around the world like people are going back to the past and they want good stuff instead of quick stuff but unfortunately the the growth of the population and the demand has just made bakers needed to to be faster needed to produce more because population was growing so and i tell yeah. everybody this story everything started yeah. at the beginning of the 21st century anyway so in 1900 yeah. bakery started changes changing because the population started growing too quickly and they couldn't keep up with the demand yeah do and you with the invention of the yeast when the yeast appeared 
everything changed. Yeah. Because they were used to use not not gist, and then they discovered the gist, and they discovered that in one hour, one hour and a half. With a, with a huge exactly. amount of yeast, they could have a, a, a huge amount of bread. So that was what. what but uh, you can feel the difference. You can feel the difference in your stomach, in your body. You swollen straight away. Your tummy becomes bigger, and it dries your mouth. So, yeah. And th these things don't happen with sourdough. I bake every day at home and at work, and I could eat sourdough all day, and I don't swollen. Yeah. I don't feel yeah. uh, big, my stomach is still not engrossed. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Do you yeah. have any yeah. special yeah. special bread that you make? you have any special recipe that you follow, that you developed? Mm. Mm. Let, let me show you first what, what I have here. <laughs> you like These flour, my, don't my, you? Yeah, my flour. You're very uh, passionate, uh, aren't you? It's yeah, a passion. It became a passion of yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, 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 love to 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 bake uh, different kind of breads, uh, but uh, the, I mean the the typical one, the common one. It's um, uh, it's an older recipe here. Um, uh, I mean, I mean, not here, but for me, I just uh, mix. Uh, uh, I don't know when when I make one 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 kilo of flour. With uh, 500 of uh, white wheat, and then I, I make a mix with Galician wheat, which is not uh, wheat, which is not uh, white. It's with a little bit of uh, uh, like yeah, and then with a little bit of rye and a little bit of, of uh, interior with whole whole wheat. Yeah, beautiful. So it makes um, well a, a very uh, a bread with a lot of flavor. And that's the, the um, I mean, I'm preparing now sourdough to bake today and I'm, I'm doing that mix. But I love the 100% the whole rye bread okay. that's, that's uh, healthy yeah. itself. It's a very healthy but bread. It's with, delicious. With, with peanuts or raisins okay. and a little bit of, of honey. It's a very good bread and baked with a loaf of, of, of uh, I don't know in English the name. It's a kind of vegetable. Traditionally here, you put the bread into uh, a vegetable loaf and you, you put it into the oven. And uh, I used to use it uh, here at home. What vegetable and, do you use? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Name. What's, like, the, uh, what's the name in Spanish? Uh, in, in, in a, uh, well, I know, I know the name in, in Italian. In Italian, it's rapa. Rapa. Like of rapa. Yeah. Like, like rapa. Is it the, in, in the, the red Spanish, one or the white one? The, the bread, the, the green one. It's in, in the Spanish, it's uh, uh, berza. berza. Okay. We call it bread, berza. It's a big loaf, big loaf. Okay. No, I never heard of it. Never heard of it. Mm. We, we, you never stop learning. This is what I'm loving about this this project. It's I'm contacting people from every part of the world and they all have little flares, but at the core, they all the same. You know, this little mother, producing starter yeast gas growing this beautiful bread and they all speak with the same love and passion that you're speaking i was fascinated though by the flower that you showed me just before how many do you have there uh i have uh, uh this is corn flour this is a uh, whole whole wheat flour yeah this is right yeah. this is galician flour and this is a white flour and do white. you and do you, I, I can see those are big bags, 20 kilos, 10 kilos. Yeah, yeah, 20 kilos, yeah. Well yeah. done, well done. Do you go, do you have a yeah. special supplier, a market? How does it work in Galicia? I, I, I well, I, I'm not a professional, but I have. No, 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 uh, but uh, I, for home bakers. Yeah, I, I have contacted many bakers by Instagram, especially. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, and, and then going to their bakeries and trying to, to, to know them as bakers and, and asking for, for, uh, for tips and for for help and the uh, the whole world of baking i think it's uh i don't know other professions but in uh, talking about baking they're all generous yeah and passionate about their work so it's a very uh rewarding thing talking to them yeah learning from them so uh i i have well some friends sir so they, they can uh, give me the flower with a good price and uh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, that I'm happy for, for them. And then I, I, I bake a lot for them, but um, uh, 
it's, it's a good it's exchange that I give it back yeah uh, what, what talking about tips that you receive from other bakers and experienced people what's the tip that you would like to leave with the audience today what would you tell them mm. one that could change their uh, baking game yeah i think we, we talked about it it's the patient and uh uh patient i mean uh, don't give up never ever because uh, you're gonna you're gonna learn it and you're gonna be uh, very uh, close to the success yeah uh, and su success is not uh, to have the perfect bread the perfect love success is to make bread yeah that's that's the success to make bread at home or to make bake wherever I, I mean, agree uh, that's yeah that's I agree. a reward Perf exactly and the issue I think nowadays is that people are uh, researching for the open crumb those big airy bubbles into the bread but that's just fancy 50, 60 years ago, people was eating bread. And you need to understand that the more air it's in, there is into the crumb, the less it lasts. That's why they actually yeah. used to make dense bread that it could last a week. And they used to bake only once a week, 10, 15 loaves for the whole week. And I remember my some people told me a few months ago that they used to prepare the dough, big bunches, five kilos, family, family, family in the town. And the baker at the end of the professional baking would go past with a with a little truck or something, collect all the uh, the the dough from these ladies housewives, bake it, and bring it to their homes because they didn't have an oven big enough. But the the the, the size of the loaves were five kilos. Uh, wow! They were huge, yeah, so yeah. you can cut a slice, but the dough will never go stale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a uh, big loaf in, in in Puglia too. Yes, the exactly. Pane, Pane di Altamura. Uh, yeah, the, exactly. I've been there. Yeah. And the, the loaves are huge. Yeah. In Galicia, we we we, we baked up uh, uh, huge loaves, but not as bigger as in in Puglia in, in uh, Altamura. In, in fact, in Italy there is a market that you actually you can buy pieces of bread. You don't have to buy the whole loaf. You can buy a quarter. You can buy a half. You can buy by grams. Yeah. It's a very beautiful way of selling bread because people can buy it fresh every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. very and, good. Yeah, and they know that good. in Puglia they actually ship their bread with Italian post all over Europe. Mm, wow. Yeah, I remember. Wow, yeah. I, wo I worked. Famous, yeah. yeah, I worked in a restaurant in uh, Trieste, in the north of Italy, and once we wanted to try the bread because it was very famous. It was very fashionable at that time. It, this was two thousand and seven, um, and and we received this big box, and the bread was fresh. Like they probably baked it, if not the same day, the day before. It was amazing. Yeah. And it lasted for 10, 12 days. I remember it was incredible. Incredible. That's the whole thing of, about a uh, good bread. Yeah. It lasts a lot. Yeah. A lot. And then after uh, 10 days, you think it's going to be like a stone and, and it, it's not. You cut it, slice, you put it into, in a, to the toaster. Yeah. And you have a fresh uh, a toast of bread. That's and, a, uh, that's amazing thing. That's the beauty. Exactly. As you said, if, uh, if you had a chance to to explain to people what bread making is, what would you? Let me reframe the question. You are a beginner. You're just starting. What you wish you knew when you started that you know now how to trade the bread or I give you some example just to make you understand the question. Uh, I, uh, I wish I knew how to use my hands. I wish I, I knew how to handle. I wish I knew to be patient. As you said before, I wish I knew that I wasn't afraid of increasing hydration. What you wish you knew in the past? Mm, yeah. Uh, uh, it's a difficult one. That's a tricky one. I wish uh, I, I knew the, uh, that the, the hydration is not uh, the main thing about nothing because when when I started, I was uh, quite obsessed about about the water, the yeah. amount of water, because I knew that with more water, the the holes were going to be bigger, yeah. and the uh, and the bread was going to be um, uh, more uh, fashionable, yeah, whatever. appealing, and, and, and yeah, and then uh, I realized that the the, the hydration is it's it's not the the important thing 
the main thing that uh, changes everything and uh, I wish I, I knew before was the fermentation. Fermentation is the, the important point, so uh, that's the thing. Fermentation and temperature. And temperature is something that I'm discovering even now that the, the doughs work uh, uh, much better at 28. That's the that's normal thing that you learn uh, in the first steps. Yeah. But if you can find a perfect environment, then everything is going to be better. Yeah. And uh, fermentation and temperature of the place that you have the, the bread. But it, it works uh, uh, always. So if you live in Finland, and it's very cold, just leave it for one or two days. It will days. ferment, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, there are two things. It's it's uh, uh, temperature and time. Yeah. That's all. That's all. I completely agree. I think time is the the only variable that you need to weigh. And do you have a certain amount of starter that you use into your dough? Because I've seen your Instagram page. And even though you are a beginner, you said you only started five or six years ago. Man, your bread is fantastic. Your crust is nice Thanks. and thick and uh, the crumb, of course, is very modern and fashionable. It's open, but it's the way you make your bread. It looks like you have a lot of passion. So I'm, as a baker, I'm curious to know how much starter do you use into your dough? What's the percentage that you use? Into one kilo of flour, how much do you put? Uh, yeah, usually I put 80% uh, hydration, 80%. Yeah. It's uh, because it's a very, uh, it has a, a good uh, amount of protein, the the mix the, of flowers that I use. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I can I can put eighty uh, percent, eighty two, and um, that's what I usually do. My my receipt, it's not a receipt. It's not this this mo this world. It's not about receipts. It's about processes. Yeah. But my receipt would be uh, uh, one kilo of flour that mix that I told before with uh, eight hundred grams of water yeah. and uh, four hundred grams of sourdough. Okay. And, okay. Uh, Twenty grams of uh, and then my the, the timetables that I'm using uh, because of my uh, timetable because of my work in timetable is uh, I usually mix at ten uh, eight at eight p.m. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I make night. the bulk for for three hours three hours and then I form the bread I shape it uh, at uh, eleven p.m. Three hours uh, bulk and then I uh, and, and uh, I shape it. I divide and shape in two loaves, and I put it into the fridge. And the day after, after eight or nine hours, I bake it. So it's uh, three hours at room temperature, and then eight nine hours in the fridge. But in the fridge, in the upper uh, shelf. Yeah, so, so it's, it's colder. The coldest. Yeah. Exactly, not the coldest. The the warmer. It's about eight eight degrees. Okay, or nine the warmest. Degrees, yeah. And I think it good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. But that that was one thing that I that I discovered with many tries and, and, and failures and uh, everything. Yeah. Did you and uh, do you bake it straight away in the morning or you wait until the dough reaches room temperature? No, no, no. I straight uh, from straight away from the fridge because I, I've learned that. There is a, a shock temperature that makes that the 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 spring oven it's better it's it's bigger yeah, yeah, yeah. the volume the volume of the loaf it's going to be bigger if you put it straight away from the fridge uh, probably because it doesn't lose as much carbon dioxide who knows mm, yeah well that Edu, was this was a wonderful wonderful experience for me and it's fantastic to have somebody that can speak Spain, uh, English so well in Spain because you actually have explained so many things and you gave us history knowledge, you gave us uh, your passion, you gave us information on the flower and uh, thank you so much for being part of this project and uh, from thank you very much. Thank Healthy you. Nasty Kitchen we want to really say thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Giuseppe. Grazie, grazie. It was a pleasure and it's going to be uh, very good to be in this project.